What's up, everybody? I'm Thomas J. Beleza, and welcome to another lesson on the right mindset. Today, we are going over plot versus story. The difference between them makes the narrative. This is something I talk about often, and I think it's about time that I break down what a narrative is for me and my perspective and how I break it into a uh, plot and story. Plot is what needs to happen. Story is how it unfolds. And today we're going to actually explore that. Um, because the exploration into the intricacy world, the intricate world of storytelling uh, is basically where we are going to demystify the often interchangeable concepts of plot and story. We're going to understand the distinction between these two fundamental elements and uh, how it's crucial for a writer. Why? Because the heart of every member why? Because the heart of every member memorable memorable narrative wow, lies in the harmonious weaving of a well-structured plot and compelling story. This lesson will illuminate not just what plot and story are, but why grasping their differences is instrumental in crafting narratives that resonate deeply with readers. And uh, again, we're going right into it. Section one. No intro video today, right? Section one, the interplay of plot and story in narrative. Yeah. At the core of narrative construction lies the nuance interplay between plot and story. Okay. Plot. Well, plot is the framework of events. The plot can be thought of as the structural framework of a narrative. It is a carefully constructed sequence of events and actions that drive the narrative forward. This includes the introduction of conflict and unfolding of events, the climax, and ultimately the resolution. The plot is about cause and effect. Each event in the plot should cause the next, creating a chain of actions uh, leading to a conclusive end. Now, the story is the emotional journey. The story, on the other hand, is about the emotional and psychological journey that characters undergo through these events. It includes the internal conflicts, motivations, thoughts, and transformations of characters. The story, pro the story provides context to the plot. It gives meaning to the action and decisions of the characters. It's the subjective experience of the events narrated in the plot. Uh, before I go any further... So plot is like Julie needs to get uh, a, a new job and uh, her friend uh, Alicia is going to help her by introducing her to her boss and recommending her and um, her journey from getting the new job to uh, basically establishing herself within that industry and making a name for herself is the plot. The way that unfolds should come through the character experiences, uh, their fears, their their uh, their confidence, their uh, you know uh, their choices, uh, the consequences of those choices, you know how they see the world, how they experience the world. All these things are the story. It's the way you're going to unfold the plot. So the character needing a job is not the same as uh, her maybe realizing that she just maybe starting the, the ordinary world off that she lost her job, right? Or she is jobless and she's been looking for a job, right? And the way she's looking at the job, is she home? Is she a slob? Is she uh, caring? Is she, uh, is she highly functional, but you know, she just can't find work, you know, whatever the situation is, that's what you establish in the ordinary world, basically. But the way she's behaving and the way she's dealing with the ordinary world is story. Now, the importance of understanding both uh, is crucial for several reasons. One, you basically can balance. Uh, uh, it's the balance and depth of the narrative because a narrative with a strong plot but a weak story may feel shallow, shallow or unengaging as it lacks emotional depth. Conversely, a narrative with a rich story but an underdeveloped plot can seem aimless or confusing. Recognizing the importance of both elements ensures a well-rounded and compelling narrative. Now, two, the character development. The plot provides situations and challenges for the characters, while the story allows us to see how these characters react and evolve. So that comes down to uh, creating a position for the character, 
challenging that position. And then does the character uh, change completely, somewhat or not at all? And that develops the growth or their arc. And if they, if they, or if they do not evolve, and the dynamic, the the, the character dynamic. Uh, is crucial for creating multidimensional characters. The w- the way the readers care about characters is through their choices, uh, the consequences of those choices, how the character reacts to those results, um, or the consequences lead to results, and then how does a character respond to those results, and so forth and so on. We root for the underdog, but you know if the underdog is reacting like nothing is happening with the consequences they're just like oh the car the car blew up that's okay i'll just i'll just grab the car from this next person uh, i'll steal the car and i'll go to work that way like you'd be like what's going on over here uh and three theme and meaning so while the plot can be exciting and entertaining the story is often where the themes and deeper meanings of the narrative are explored it's in the story that the narrative communicates uh, it's broader messages and connects with the reader on a deeper level. Okay, let's keep going. Boop. Number two, diving deeper into plot and story, the heart and skeleton of a narrative. Mm-hmm. Okay, plot, again, is the skeleton of your narrative. Okay, so here's four things to understand. One, plot is a sequential and cause a uh, cause. Uh, is how the events unfold. The plot is a series of events in a specific order, each causing or leading to the next. It's the what happens in a story. This sequence includes the setup, the conflict, the climax, and the resolution. Or more importantly, this is what happens in the narrative. And if you follow this channel and you know how I outline, I talk in great detail about the 27 chapter outline. Also, the way I look at it is the 27 plot point outline. And a plot is literally following those plot, those 27 plot points. And they could be as simple as, you know, Sarah needs a job. uh, Sarah gets a foreclosure or or a a eviction notice. uh, So she definitely needs the money. She responds by reaching out to all her friends. Uh, One friend says, sure. Uh, She got, you know what I'm saying? Like, those are plot points, but like how those unfold on the page, well, that becomes the story. Moving forward, number two for plot is conflict and tension. Central to the plot is the introduction of conflict, which can be external between characters or with nature or internal within a character. The plot's progression often resolves or revolves. I'm sorry. The plot's progression often revolves around these conflicts and the tensions they create. So plot is conflict and tension, right? So what kind of conflict and tension do we want? And how do the characters react to that would be the story. Three, plot is involves the pacing and structure. The plot determines the pacing of the narrative. Fast-paced action, slow building suspense, or a mix of both contribute to the narrative's structure and influence the reader's experience. Um, this might be an example of too much plot or information up front would be really fast paced. Uh, and what happens is that you can use story to slow that pace down by going, let's explore a little bit of the characters. How are they dealing with this? What is the immersion? Are we going too descriptive or not descriptive enough? Right. Um, and that's the thing. If it's just plot, it's just like, boom, 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 boom. Right. But pacing and structure is also important in the sense of like what is happening and when is it happening will help dictate how the narrative moves because of the plot. And of course, number four, plot points and climax. Key moments or plot points are crucial in a plot. They're the significant events that change the direction of the narrative leading to the climax where the tension reaches its peak. All right, let's talk about story, which is the heart of your narrative. The story, number one, the story delves into the character's internal experiences, their thoughts and feelings, reactions and changes. It's the how and why behind the character's actions. This is their emotional and psychological journey. Number two, story allows us to deal with character development through the story, uh, through the narrative itself, because story 
allows characters to develop through exploration. Their backgrounds, motivations, and transformations are revealed often uh, through the story of their choices. So it's, again, it's a position, like they're put into a position and they have a personal position on that situation. It is challenged. There is a consequence. And based on the results, they either change completely, somewhat, or not at all. And that helps develop them as a character. The story, uh, number three, the story also allows uh, for the exploration of themes and the inclusion of subtext. It's here that a narrative conveys its message and deeper meanings. Okay. Um, and also, it's through the story that the reader connects. This is number four. The reader connects through character exploration, and that is the story. The story is what pulls readers in. Readers will rarely, if ever, be emotionally connected to plot. They're not emotionally connected to Sarah needs a job. They're emotionally connected to how that affects Sarah. <laughs> like the way she's responding to that, that I need a job plot point is what they connect to. All right. If you haven't done so already before we continue uh, and you're a beginner or advanced writer, author, screenwriter, whatever, please subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out. If you don't know, we do lessons on the craft, as you are seeing, analyzing, reviewing, storytelling, and we interview fellow uh, writers. Number three. All right, let's do this. There you go. All right. Plot examples. Okay, Dave must meet Rita. That must happen. This is what needs to happen. Number two, they fall in love. This is what needs to happen in the narrative. Dave and Rita must meet and they must fall in love. Dave learns that Rita is married. So those three things have to happen in that order. Okay. So if Dave learns that Rita is married before they get meet and fall in love, that changes the uh, plot. The plot as written so far is Dave must meet Rita through their meeting. They fall in love. And ultimately Dave learns that Rita is married. So what would be story examples? Uh, oh, sorry. Story examples. So one, a scene. So Dave must meet Rita. So a story example would be a scene where Dave and Rita meet unexpectedly at a gallery, sparking conversation about art that hints at their mutual attraction. So that's the way it unfolds, right? Now we can say this is more plot because it is, but it's like we're, we're exploring story plot. But a scene where Dave... so. What I'm talking about when I say this is that over the course of the scene would be the story. This would be where, you know, uh, Dave walked into the, into the packed gallery. Um, um, stopping. Take notice of the crowd. Um, okay. There's days we're not normally this packed. Packed. But after a hard day, he knew he had to uh, reward himself. Uh, for getting this far. Okay. All right. Uh, Thursday. Oh. There's days. Uh, not normally this packed, but after. Okay. By the way, this is process and thought. So, <clears throat> uh, this is. All right. So, this is what, you know, Dave is. We're seeing him move. Dave walked into the packed gallery gallery he's st uh, stopping to take notice of the crowd so that's behavior and action we're seeing we're seeing movement this is character this is character development um but it's also plot because something is happening right and then uh thursdays are not normally this packed but after a hard day 
he knew he had to reward himself. So this is also character. This is moving through his process. He's he's working through the process. He's he's uh, validating those reasons to be here. And it's better than saying he thought to himself that Thursdays are not normally packed. So we just kind of put it into the fluidity of the passage. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, he grabbed. Uh, he grabbed. uh glass of wine and headed to his to uh, headed to the bloom bloom exhibit 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 bloom all right we'll just do that bloom bloom exhibit all right okay all right so oh. Is uh, laughter uh, disrupted the small group of people surrounding? Da, da, da. Okay, so this is this is story, by the way. This is how story unfolds, right? We're just kind of like unfolding. So his laughter disrupted the small group of people uh, surrounding uh, the statue statue uh, of a of a duck man a duck man uh, wearing a hat and eating a ham sandwich okay his laughter disrupted the small group of people surrounding uh, okay they turned to him oh I could do this them turning to him did not sway the loudness of in his enjoyment, <laughs> uh, uh, he, he took a swig, 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 uh, swig of wine, uh, and overemphasized uh, his swishing. Within his mouth, uh, ending okay, ending with a wink to uh, the people as he walked off. Okay, all right. So, beep. We get it, right? I don't, I don't, right? But I, I need, I need him to meet reader and all that stuff. But right now, this is, this is. I'm just showing you showing. Uh, showing i'm i'm uh, doing story right now so this would be the story so the plot is dave must meet rita so this is the introduction to the scene we're seeing it evolve we're learning about the character and he hasn't even said anything yet so dave walked into the pack gallery stopping to take notice of the crowd thursdays are not normally this pack but after a hard day he knew he had to reward himself for getting this far he grabbed a glass of wine and headed to the bloom bloom exhibit uh, uh out stopping uh, uh, to tip the uh, waiter behind the table. Okay. Uh, his laugh disrupted the small group of people surrounding the statue of a duck man wearing a hat and eating a ham sandwich. Uh, them turning to him did not sway the loudness and his enjoyment. He took a swing, a swig. Is that, is that spell right? Swig. Yeah, swig. A swig. You know, like swig, yeah, drink uh, of wine, and overemphasize his swishing, uh, overemphasize the swishing within his mouth, ending with a wink to the people as he walked off. So that's a lot of character. Uh, we're we're learning a little bit about him. We're learning. We're getting some uh, idea of what's in the room. We know that it's a boom boom exhibit, <laughs> bloom bloom uh, exhibit. Um, we know that he doesn't tip the waiter, right? Getting a lot about his personality, and this is, a, and and we also are understanding what the Bloom Bloom exhibit is. It's weird stuff, like a statue of a duck man wearing a hat and eating a ham sandwich. All right, now we know he also he likes it. There's a not only, but he knew he had to reward himself. So even though he had a bad day, right, he had a hard day, he still was like, I gotta go see this thing. All right, so he's choosing to be here for reasons outside, and that is story. And if I kept going. 
you know, the next big scene, maybe the chapter is a scene where Dave uh, under the starlight sky confesses his love. To, so this would be much later in the in the novel, obviously. So I know that I have to get there. So I know that the first scene, this might actually even be the uh, inciting incident because they're going to meet. Right. Um, but uh, there would, you know, after the inciting incident, there's the reaction to the to the inciting incident. So these these little things here will actually, you know, there's stuff between them. And that's the story. You got to build on that. And as you build on that, you start developing a stronger story for the narrative. Which allows the plot to live through the experience for the readers. All right. Anyway, and then ultimately... Uh, you need a heart-wrenching scene where Dave discovers Reader's marriage, uh, capturing his turmoil and sense of betrayal. Oof. Final thoughts. All right. Hey, hey. Uh, uniting plot and, uh, and story for impactful storytelling. That says right there on the screen. Um, the true artistry and narrative creation lies not just in developing a compelling series of events, plot, or a deep emotional journey, story, but in seamlessly weaving them together to create a narrative that resonates and remains uh, and remains with the reader long after the last page is turned. A couple things uh, to take away from this lesson is think about think of plot and story as dancing partners. You know, each brings their unique strengths to the performance. The plot offers the steps and movements. Uh, basically the events, while well, the story provides the rhythm and emotion, which is the character's experiences. Together, they create a dance that is both structured and expressive, right? So ultimately, we got to do the tango. What are the steps in the tango is plot. How they perform the tango and those steps with their personality is the story. And a well-balanced narrative uses the plot to introduce challenges and conflicts while the story explores the character's responses and transformations from those challenges. Uh, the contrast between the external plot and internal story can often heighten the narrative's emotional impact. So why does this matter? Why, why is it important to know the difference between plot and story? Um, and to uh, have a fundamental understanding of that, well, a narrative that is masterful, a narrative that masterfully blends plot and story captivates the reader on multiple levels. The plot keeps them turning pages, uh, eager to find out what's happening next, while the story connects them emotionally to the characters and their journeys. So that creates the intrigue and the interest and the connection where they're just like, I need to know what happens to these characters because I, I feel for them, you know? And, uh, the, the, why it matters is because by understanding the interplay between plot and story, you can add depth and layers to your writing. This not only enhances the reader's experience, but it also elevates the narrative. Okay. Um, some things you can do, uh, for practice, you know, is maybe take a favorite book or movie and analyze its plot and story. Identify how the plot uh, or in events uh, intertwine with the character's emotional journeys. Basically, look at a scene and go, what needs to happen in the scene? And more importantly, what happens in the scene? They come into the room. They have a conversation. Uh, they discover... Uh, X, Y, and Z about each other. Uh, and then ultimately the plot is pushed forward by learning that they have to meet somebody, right? That would be plot. But then look at how they're behaving in the scene. Are they being standoffish? Are they being complimentary? Are they communicating? How are they emotionally involved in the scene? How, where are they being challenged? And how are they reacting to that challenge? That story. Uh, with that said, practice, you know, in your next writing project, uh, consciously plan both your plot and story. Challenge yourself to create a plot that is engaging and a story that is emotionally rich, just like I did in real time. You know, take the plot and say, all right, I need this. So how do we build into that? Okay. But ultimately, 
Remember, a great narrative does more than tell a story. It takes the reader on a journey. Okay? The plot uh, is the path of this journey. Okay? Well, the story is the scenery and the experiences along the way. So as a writer, your challenge is to make both the path and the journey worthwhile. That's all I'm saying. Next in this series, uh, if you've been watching the videos lately, this is the final video in this playlist series. Uh, this video is number 10. So I basically have been reorganizing my lessons. I've been adding new playlists and adding to older playlists periodically. I want to expand the Right Mindset YouTube channel to include more specific playlist topics, etc. So keep an eye out for that. Question. What writing terminology do you wish I would talk about in this playlist? Uh, let me know in the comments below, and I'll be happy to make a video on that. And uh, if you like what you've watched and you have not done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. Woo! All right. As always, keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. I love you.